So I uh, ended up quitting my job and uh, taking family medical leave to drive my mom back and forth to radiation for the last three months of her life, and she died holding my hand in this house. And one of my father uh, found out that my brother, a couple years later, was uh, facing 15 years in prison. He got sick with multiple myeloma, and he blames the stress of seeing his son after losing his wife to cancer in prison in handcuffs 15, 15 years and basically spending $100,000 here, $70,000 there, until it's all about $383,000 exactly to get my brother out of prison. That's when he got cancer. He ended up in a wheelchair, so I ended up quitting my job repeatedly, taking family medical leave, putting my career on hold, and doing that um, for a very long time. And uh, intermittently, my dad would go on remission and I'd go back to my apartment, go back to work, up until my brother got about a five year uh, felony probation and was stuck in this house, abusing my dad. And so finally, my dad uh, revoked his license to live here in 2009. And again, in 2013, uh, he asked me to go to court uh, with my uh, non-biological uncle, uh, my father's best friend from kindergarten, to get him evicted and kicked out of here. And he hasn't lived here uh, since, since then. And uh, tried to come back and camp here in 2019 uh, in the backyard and assaulted my father and I. Assaulted my dad, cancer patient, I don't take care of him. Blood everywhere, horrible scene. And... Uh, Basically, uh, since 2019, uh, he's just complained to my dad that he needs money or he's going to kill himself or, you know, he's got a, a, a probation thing or some, some girl part of order protection. He's in some trouble. His car's going to break down. He needs $800 or that. So we would give him the money. And then I started to say, you know, Andreas, and dad might not be around for too much longer. He just tried to spend some time with us and talk to us like a real person. And stop just say, oh, what's wrong? Just so finally, my dad, you know, he, he, we knew that he... He was, he was dying and had too much longer. We didn't know how much longer. But he started to hand me the phone in tears, even when in the hospital. And he was like, Andreas just doesn't understand how sick I am. He just doesn't get it. He doesn't give a fuck. He just cares about himself. So the day my dad died, you know, he said days of asking Andreas to come see him in the hospital. Uh, we come home the day my dad died, my wife and I. And uh, we come home to find out he had just recently broken a house. And at the time, I didn't have the most sophisticated alarm system. Never needed it. Um, thanks to the police, you know, thank you. Thank you for your service. You know, I've paid a lot of taxes, and, 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 I've, and I've, I've got a lot of respect for the lifesavers. You know, I, I wish I was an auxiliary police officer, to be honest with you. To all the police officers are a fan of my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing. Um, so uh, I came home uh, to this house to, to find it being burglarized by my brother. Instead of visiting his dad while he was dying, you know, say, hey, Dad's, Dad's dying. You know, Dad'd be like, oh, I'm dying, Andreas. Oh, I'm busy. I can't come here. He's busy burglarizing the house. And so then he tried to make some fake order of protection. He said, oh, his driver's license says he still lives here, which hasn't been changed, which is fraudulent. Tried to have me thrown out of here. And he's been, been denying the, the will of my dad. And yeah, in court, I guess it's not valid. But who in their right mind would. would would say that video of my dad is coerced or that was in his handwriting he didn't want all his my dad's friends know that he left everything to me because my brother is a screw up I don't want to say the f word again camera and uh i'm the only family he's got the only person who could figure out you know renting this place out and selling your artwork and one day you know be able to give him money but instead i'm struggling paying court fees and uh you know Sometimes super heroes you need your help, so I have a uh, GoFundMe uh, page uh, and a, uh, a, a fundraiser on Facebook. But the fundraiser on Facebook, I, I believe, is the most active. My brother, however, went uh, behind my back and said, "No, go ahead, give to his fundraiser because you know they don't, my fundraiser is not valid and this, that, and the other thing, and whatever kind of crazy shit he says about me is absolutely not true." I have uh, over 50 witnesses. I've written letters to the lawyers, and some said actually to the judge um, and the court. You know, I don't think the judge directly, but to the court. You know, and uh, I've all testified as witnesses to, to my brother's behavior, from assault and my dad. And it's embarrassing. Yeah, I know. Um, and it, 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 it was something my father was ashamed of. You know, but and, and, and in hindsight, a lot of the things that my brother was accused of, he didn't do. And it was a system that really made the, the shit 
really hit the fan. And if you don't have money in, in America to pay for lawyers, and, and you know, you end up going to jail, and you, you can't make bail, and all sorts of shit happens to you. And it's horrible because shit happens when you're in there. And unfortunately, something must have happened to my brother when he was in the military. But even before that, in the high school, when I wasn't there to, to, to bodyguard him, went at the bus stop and pick him up. And that's what makes me upset, is that he no longer saw me as a superhero when they made me out to be an evil person for marijuana. Cannabis, to be exact. And, oh, that's your drug dealing crazy brother, and they charged him with a felony marijuana dealing for him, a few bags of weed in my pocket, trying to make an example out of the whole town, this whole Republican, Trump-supporting town, which is the most conservative county in the state of New York, because marijuana was the devil weed, and, and kids would come over my house, and, and we'd be teenagers, and they'd see that first naked picture of a woman with breasts at my house. And I didn't do, do this at the table and go to Jesus and do, didn't do all that stuff. But we were God-loving people. We were loving, happy, kind people. Nice family. My parents ended up being teachers because they just couldn't really deal with, with being business people and selling art and hanging out. When my dad was sick and then they had a kid who was sick and then they had two kids. And they were both broke. So we, I grew up chopping wood to heat this house taking care of my father. I had to be the man of the house. I had to be the superhero. I had to be the big brother. But how could I do that when they put me away for what actually makes me happy and feel better? Well, go figure. You know, got your superheroes, you know. Got your nice family. Both of my parents want to have their asses buried in Manapsha Beach. And I'd need your help for that memorial to happen. It's been a long time. My father and I were supposed to go to Menemsha Beach in Martha's Vineyard. Friend, my mom, dad. Now both of their ashes deserve to be there. But the legal system has cost my family all the money they had, the love that my dad had for his son, for his youngest son, cost him his fortune. It cost me my fortune, my career too, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. I love my father, I love my mother. I would, I took care of them because that was the right thing to do. And I think that's the right thing to do, to take care of one another, like a big family. And I'm grateful for my friends, and I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, because my friends, you've been more of a family of, to me than anyone except my mother and father. And the same with my mother and father, our friends. You've been our family. You, you've been more of a family to me than... My other family, other than my grandmother, and I, I knew my grandma, grandfather was very close to, to him, but they're no longer here. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to have a memorial, for real, for my parents and Martha Jr. <laughs> where we used to go and throw their ashes in the Hampshire Beach and have a big party here and preserve the studio and not be forced to sell it um, by an unjust or unfair or... You know, who knows what kind of, uh, you know, judgment is made because uh, um, of the, the probate of the, uh, the court situation. And, um, you know, wh whatever it is, I'm going to do my best to, if, if, if need be, buy my brother out from whatever portion uh, they feel that uh, he's legally entitled to, which, in, in all honesty, he's not entitled to anything. My father was very clear about that. That when your brother gets in trouble, take some of the profits you made from the art sale and get him out of trouble again. But don't let him live here. Don't let him, don't let him uh, tell anybody his art's bullshit. And uh, he's not entitled to anything because his, his inheritance is his freedom. He cost my father his life savings. He caused my parents so much stress 
yet we still love them. Can you imagine that? And unconditional love, that's being a superhero. When you can love somebody that's tried to put you in jail, that stabbed you, that's tried to do all the kind of kung fu crazy stuff they taught them in the paratroop school, you know, you can still love somebody who's done all that to you. That's real love, you know, and that's brother love. And I love my brother, and I love you. I love you. And you can just say your name, because then you can try to say, oh, it's harassment or something like that. But I love you, my brother. I love your baby, my baby brother. Got <laughs> You know, he's, I've had to take down so many of my YouTube videos that I was working on because he tried to use that in court, and the whole thing, whole court erupted in laughter because it was funny, and it was not threatening anybody. It's just me trying to make people laugh and laugh at myself. And hey, man, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, we can't laugh at each other. There's really nothing worth fighting for. That superheroes should, shouldn't exist, right? So, I love my country. I love my flag. I don't, I don't need to have a badge. I don't need to have, have a conceal and carry permit and an auxiliary police license, even though I would love to. But uh, God bless America. And thank you, Tommy, for your support. Check out the art on Buffy Studio Fine Art Gallery. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, yeah. Uh, I'm going to upload some more videos because, uh, yeah, I mean, you can call me crazy, but I know right from wrong. One love. Peace.